Scouts, Ed, behind your back. Shoot up a storm and download only the best from your PC. Yes, the Mod B, the digital camera with a fast break detachable lens, only from the mind of an author. New pitcher will be left-hander Graham Lloyd with the Yankees leading 8-2 to two going to the top of the eighth inning. This copyrighted telecast is authorized on the rights granted by the New York Yankees solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publications, reproductions, retransmissions, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express, without the express written consent of the New York Yankees and Madison Square Garden Network is strictly prohibited. But Graham Lloyd comes in to take over the pitching. ERA of 1.75. He hasn't uh, worked since the doubleheader in Oakland. The Yankee starters pitching so effectively, but check those numbers out. Here's a guy that the Yankees thought they got damaged goods when his shoulder was bothering him a little bit. I mean, he's been healthy and as effective as any pitcher out of that uh, out of that bullpen. And that's going to be a key word, bullpen, as we uh, wind down the last six weeks of the season. With Texas coming in this weekend, I'm sure Brian Cashman and Joe Torrey will get a look at some of the matchups mentioned David Weathers getting Juan Gonzalez out quite well during the 1996 division series. And if there's one area that the Yankees this is almost a joke it's the only area that they'd really like to solidify a little bit is is Jeff Nelson healthy and if not you know maybe during postseason play Orlando Hernandez would be the, the guy that you would say in a clutch situation you would bring in to try to get out Juan Gonzalez. Graham Lloyd to Molitor. First pitch swinging looped into short right. Now it's going to be a tough play and Molitor will have a loop single. Got the hat trick today. Molly recently had a uh, five hit game against Baltimore today. Three hits against the Yankees. Well he didn't hit that one well at all. That, that's you know that might be one of those three thousand plus hits he want to give back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Never known a hitter to do that. <laughs> Usually the first words after a bloop like that is, ah, they're finally evening out for all the line drives I hit at people. Matt Lawton, the cleanup hitter, with his first look at Graham Lloyd. Ball one. You know, one of the things that Lloyd has done uh, very well, you, we, we saw his stats, only two walks coming in out of the bullpen. So usually big left-hander throws strikes. Sharply and in the hole for a base hit. Threw a strike there. And the Twins making a little noise here in the eighth inning with back-to-back -back singles. David Cohn went seven, and you would never have guessed it after that second <laughs> inning. It looked like he was really on the rocks. He throws 92 pitches and only allows two runs. Baltimore behind Scott Erickson, a complete game shutout. Palmero hit his 36th home run. Scott Ayer, the left-hander, was perfect through five and two-thirds innings in that game against Oakland. And here's the veteran Terry Steinbach. Right back to Lloyd, and it could be, but it won't be three, but it'll be two. <laughs> Keep throwing strikes. It'll pay off eventually. Makes up for Molitor's bloop, says Graham Lloyd. Well, off the end of the bat, looked like a sinker. Right back to, uh, he's waiting for somebody to get to second base. It's going to be Knoblock who takes the throw. It, it looked as though Graham Lloyd looked at Jeter. But Jeter gave way to Knobloch and he finally unloaded and got him for the DP. Which wipes out Molitor's base hit in a hurry. Now with two down, here's Todd Walker. High for a ball. One thing I've noticed with Graham Lloyd is he is working at a much faster pace. He cannot wait to get the ball back and get back into his motion. Maybe he feels that's he's more effective that way. Upstairs, 2-0. Walker got his first hit in the series. That was off David Cohn, a double third inning to drive in the Twins' second run. Ground foul, and the count is two and one. You know, talking to him the other day about the aluminum bat, he went away and played in the uh, Cape Cod League, which is a, a wooden bat league, and he said it was a good experience, although when he first started to use a wooden bat, it was the first time ever he thought it was going to, like, explode in his hands if he didn't hit the ball correctly. Hey. And of course, that, that can't happen. But he said when he went back to school and when it went back to the aluminum bat, he said he really had a lot of confidence. <laughs> yeah. 
and, Cowders. Won, and went, went on again to be an All-American. Count is three and one. And there's a fastball on the edge. Count is full. We're talking about bats a while ago and weight and length. I think that's one of the reason that players to the reasons that players use lighter bats. You swing those aluminum bats in amateur ball and a, a 31 ounce bat 32 can feel kind of heavy. Hit well left field but oh he got a late break but he's going to get there. That's, that is not an easy field to play today with the sunlight. Couple of singles. Graham Lloyd shuts down the Twins in the eighth. Yankees lead by six. Worldwide. Summer means clearance at your Chrysler and Plymouth dealer. Clearance means low finance rates. Now get 1.9 APR on all Chrysler and Plymouth minivans. Clearance means America's lowest priced minivan, Plymouth Voyager, costs even less. Clearance means big factory authorized cash back. Get 1500 cash back on Plymouth Grand Voyager and Chrysler Town & Country LXI. Summer means clearance. Clearance means savings at your Chrysler and Plymouth dealer. introduces new extra crispy chicken. It's the crispiest, crunchiest KFC chicken yet. Now get 10 pieces of extra crispy for only $8.99. Isn't it time for some really crispy chicken? It's like a pretty nice spot to be on an afternoon like today. Yankees leading by six. We want to remind you that tomorrow you can check out Liberty Basketball right here on MSG. New York tries to shoot their win to the into the WNBA playoffs. Don't miss great hoops action live from the garden. Rebecca Lobo and the Liberty take on the Washington Mystics. That's tomorrow at 730 exclusively on MSG all over the Liberty. That might be Al in his new lifeguard shirt and his Speedos that he got uh, <laughs> last night. There's Eddie Everyday Guardado. Making his 56th appearance of the year. In that regard, it's been kind of a light year for Eddie because he's usually up at 70s about this time of year. 43 hits and 46 and two-thirds innings. But you're right. They called him every day because he pitched, well, maybe not every day, but certainly around every other day. He came up. The Twins thought he might be a starter. He was successful in the minor leagues as a starter, but good durable arm. And you saw the strikeout total, almost one per inning. He's got a live fastball. Joe Torre will go to his bench and uh, give some of the guys a couple at bat. Shane Spencer will get a chance here. He'll hit for Paul O'Neill in the Yankee eight. First pitch and first strike. Well, after Spencer got that first major league hit out of the way on the West Coast, he just jumped right through that door with a five for five in his in a start, including a couple of home runs. On the edge, 0 oh. and 2. I would I would imagine Shane will be the guy eliminated when Chili Davis is active. We don't know that for sure, but uh, Chili Davis in his rehab assignment last night got a, a double couple of walks the Yankees feel he might be ready early next week breaking ball and the count is 0 and 2 to Spencer like Ricky Leday before Spencer did he break the glasses yeah but it was oh worth the ball I don't know that's if those are those designer oh yeah babies that's an expensive exchange he's gonna those say pipes he's got he should have been able to get him up and knock that ball down <laughs> Uh, like uh, Ricky Lede before Spencer, when uh, Ricky Lede got called up and performed very well in Yankee pinstripes. Shane Spencer is 
in the limited opportunities that those two have gotten. Yep. Intact. Pop those babies back in. They've done a good job, both Spencer and Ladeau. Lay down that one and uh, strikeout victim. I think what that does, Kenny, I don't know what stage of the year you came up in, but if you get a chance to get a little playing time and be a part of a successful team, it, it makes you hungry. You want to get back there and be a full-time guy like you know, Homer Bush could be on several ball clubs. But these guys might be thinking, well, maybe we'll get that ring out of the way first. You don't know where we're going next. Might not have the same opportunities you have here with the Yankees for success. Speaking of opportunities, Bernie Williams has one right here. He could homer from both sides of the plate. It went off Mike Trombley in his last at bat. On the edge, strike one. Gardado has uh, hit that outside corner consistently. Orlando Hernandez and Kenny mentioned Rick Helling is a 15 game winner for the Texas Rangers. He, they are the pitchers tomorrow night when Texas comes to town. Ooh, good swing there. 0 and 2. That was the swing to accomplish the home run from both sides of the plate. And that one was headed for right central. Up and out over the plate. Side one and two. Yankees just to throw some numbers out there are trying to extend their home record to 45 and 8. It would be their seventh straight win. And they've had a few of those seven game winning streaks, haven't they? Off speed pitch, another good swing. Foul straight back. 87th win of the season. It would run the record to 87 and 29. David Cohn would be a 17 game winner. In the air to right playable. Carrying pretty well near the track but Coomer shielding his eyes will make the grab. <laughs> That's the second out of the inning. And while we have a chance, you see uh, joining us in the booth. Come on in, Howie. We, we, a very special occasion coming up here. Is, uh, Howie's uh, getting married. The last day before the big honeymoon. We wish you well. Always a pleasure to see Howie Stein out here in our Harry. booth helping us out. You're telling us where you're going on your honeymoon, Harry? Hawaii. Uh, Hawaii. Uh, wow. <laughs> what a schedule he's got. Boy, between he and Webby. <laughs> Fall straight back. That's going to reach the seats and fall out of play. And another member of our Win. group. Wave, win, wave. Yeah. Wave to the people, yeah. Happy birthday. Win Bernfeld. Now, they're giving conflicting ages here. 27, I think. Oh, 27 I years old? Oh, good. Congratulations, I think. He wishes. I can't remember 27. <laughs> <laughs> Outside, well, when you see the games on MSG and you hear the sounds, those are a couple of examples of the crew that make oh. it possible for us here on MSG to, I mean today we've had some great shots of the uh, pitching motion and the close ups from the center field angle. As a matter of fact that was when yeah. he was the guy taking those shots. Counts three and one now to Tino Martinez. Of course we can't forget the guys in the truck you know they they wouldn't forgive us if we didn't mention them down there in that nice <laughs> nice air conditioned comfort down there. <laughs> That's a walk. 
And the Yankees continue here in the latter part of this ball game to tack on or give themselves opportunities. Tom Kelly got a pretty good outing out of his starting pitcher today. LaTroy Hawkins had uh, one bad inning in the fourth, but it's all come apart, and it's the same old story for Minnesota. As Tom Kelly checked out his lineup card, and he's comparing those lineups and saying, wow, I used to have guys like that back in the early 90s with Kirby Puckett and Ken Herbeck. They won a world championship. Here's Luis Soho. He comes off the pine to get in at bat. First pitch swinging, strike one. In the DH spot, hitting for Daryl Strawberry. Now Over Bush and Posada, the two left. Yeah, the, here's an example of Soho the other night. He, he got a start. Plugged him in over at first base. We got three hits. He hadn't played in about a week, maybe 10 days. But a chance to make a contribution, and he pounced on it. Lead on that one, and it's 0-2. Well, these guys know with a comfortable lead, postseason plays coming up. And those roster moves that combination of manager, coaching staff, and front office make to see which 25 guys they want to take to the postseason play, you want to show them that mm -hmm. you can do the job. Soho valuable, of course, with the glove and good hit and run man. You got Homer Bush who gives you some speed coming off the bench. Louie went up there to swing. Not interested in taking a walk. There's been plenty of souvenirs today. Oh. A, a catcher's glove. I took a catcher's glove with him, a Girardi fan. Oh, isn't that sweet? Gave the ball to the other lady and got a kiss from the other one. <laughs> Good trade. <laughs> and Soho on his fourth attempt comes up with a base hit. Martinez will make it to third and the Yankees have runners on the corners with two out here in the eighth prolonging the agony for the Minnesota Twins. Yeah, Louie handed out some souvenirs before he got his base hit tipping his cap to the uh, <laughs> players in the dugout or think it can't be that easy. All smiles on the Yankee front. Except one and that's maybe the guy in the batter's box. He just came in late in the ball game had one at bat and strike out he'd like to uh, be a part of the cause here first pitch swinging straight back Tim Raines started in left field and got a couple of base hits and two runs scored getting a closer look Upstairs, one and one. Well, Laz Diaz will get a little black cord fever after the game. <laughs> Call his family. First day behind the plate. He had uh, a nice full day, a little of everything. David Cohn, one of baseball's oh. best pitchers. So that was back there when the Yankees pounded up a couple of home. He had to get out of the way of a few wild pitches. Those that uh, joined us late, Laz Diaz, home plate umpire, making his major league debut behind the plate. He's filling in for Derwood Merrill, who had to uh, return home to Texas to attend the funeral of his father. Curtis has joined the crowd. An RBI single, and it's 9-2. No, Gardano will give up a run. Got the first two outs. Then a walk kind of opened the door. Tom Kelly has seen another reliever scored upon. Soho with a base hit. And then Curtis with a base hit. Yeah. <laughs> that's the uh, that's the message they're sending. But don't put that banner up this weekend. Yeah, no. Well, you mentioned David Cohn. And David Cohn kind of provided his own relief after getting off to a a little bit of a shaky start with his control, maybe not throwing the pitches where he wanted. The Twins took an early 2 0 lead. But once uh, the Yankees put four up in the fourth, David Cohen decided, well, there's number 17. He could put it on the board. Scott Brush has put that RBI, those RBIs on the board. Now a career high, 72. His uh, career high was 71. Scott now has 14 home runs. He's got to hit eight more to tie his career high. Outside Kenny the point you made and again not taking 
shots at Bobby Valentine, the Mets manager, just referring to one of his quotes where I guess some writer one time asked him, wasn't that a key moment in early in the game? And he said, that's ridiculous. There's 27 outs. A turning point doesn't happen early in the game. Today's another example that it does. It was the 3-6-1 double play in the second inning that was the key at bat in this entire ballgame. On the edge. David Cohn was struggling with his control. The Twins had the bases loaded for the second inning in a row. And he got a, a ground ball double play and off the bat of Brent Gates. Yeah, covered the bag himself over at first. Very difficult to turn. 3-6-1. In the gap right center. Brosh is going to add to his career high RBI total. The hits just keep on coming. Curtis is being waved home and the Yankees have hit double figures. 11 to 2. Now well, Scott Brosh is. <laughs> Scott Brosh is now with five runs batted in on the afternoon. And he's going to fill a gap in right center pitch up and out over the plate. And of course with two outs the runners are off and running and Otis Nixon actually gets to it before he gets to the wall but not in time to prevent two runs from scoring. And Eddie Gardalo got the first two outs of the inning. A strikeout and a harmless fly ball and then all of a sudden Eddie has given up three runs just like that. He doesn't look like a happy camper. Yet sometimes Eddie Guard Guardado is used to pitching in winning games for the Twins. Tom Kelly brought him in here today, and you you got to kick yourself a little from a concentration standpoint. Just important to get outs as a relief pitcher when your team is down by four, as in close games. He's not the same Guardado we're accustomed to seeing. Here's Girardi. Speaking of key hits in turning points, when the Yankees were down a couple, it was Joe Girardi with. A hit and run double the gap in left center that provided the three to two lead at the time. Now Guardado a little trouble finding the strike zone that's inside two and oh. Scott Brosh is also with a tying a career high five RBIs in one ball game. The third time he's done it. Right at Walker. And they finally stopped the bleeding. In the last three innings, the Yankees have tacked on seven runs and expanded the lead to 11 to 2. They're three outs away from their 87th win. We'll have it for you when we come back. Hi, I'm Tom Seaver. At Chase, your company is in good company, like Lillian Vernon, a member of Tom Seaver's Business Hall of Fame. Chase, the right relationship is everything. They look unstoppable. Hit deep to right. A grand slam home run for Bernie Williams. On a pace to go down is one of the greatest teams in baseball history. Curtis on the run. And he makes a tremendous team. The best team in baseball is right here in the Big Apple. The best team in baseball coverage is right here on MSG. The Yanks are in Kansas City to battle the Royals after New York City Marriott scorecard. Monday night on MSG. For ticket information, call one eight 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 four Metro Tips. Because our neighborhoods are as distinct as our taste in sports, MSG has created International Sunday, a time when fans everywhere can watch their favorite games played around the world, from soccer to Australian rules football. It's International Sunday, only on MSG Network.
another blowout at the stadium. The Yankees just relentless here in the last few innings. It's 11 to 2. Spencer stays in the ball game. He went in to hit for O'Neill. Shane will play right field. Luis Soho will stay in and play first base. And after one inning from Graham Lloyd, Joe Torre will send Joe Borowski to the bullpen to the uh, ball game. Coming out of the bullpen, his third game yet to give up a run. Kind of nice for guys like Borowski and uh, Mike Jerzenbeck to get an inning in here and there and be a part of this. Local guys. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, she can see that 87th win coming up a little closer. And she can see that guy playing shortstop. 24-year-old <laughs> Derek Jeter. Derek's had a hit in five at-bats today to stay in the top ten in the American League batting race. Here's Ron Coomer. And the Yankees three outs away from their seventh consecutive win on the homestand. First pitch strike from Borowski. If you missed it earlier, because it seems like there's different records and streaks to talk about every game, the Yankees took over the lead in the fourth inning. And that was the 41st consecutive game that they have been in the lead. And you might say, well, what, what's the big deal there? Well, it, it hasn't happened since 1932. And guess who held the record? 1932 Yankees. That is not a perfect game anymore for Scott Ayer as you look at the scores. He was lifted from that ball game, but the White Sox do lead Oakland 2-0 in the seventh inning. But it is a combined effort. From, uh, Keith Polk coming out of the bullpen and Scott Air. Coomer down on strikes and Borowski has the first out of the night. Borowski showing a pretty good fastball. Jersey Joe out of Rutgers University. Paints some solid heat over the outside corner. Good four seamer riding up and away from Coomer and strikes him out. Here of the proof. Yeah, they have swept. They swept the Royals in a four game series and are two outs away from sweeping the twins. Javier Valentin. Ground foul. Yeah, you mentioned earlier you we showed Latroy Hawkins fastball and that was a good example for the fans to see the difference between a four seamer and a two seamer. Borowski's fastball with four seams kind of has that riding action doesn't have a lot of, of lateral movement to it like the two seamer. Yankees tied a season high today 18 hits upstairs for a ball and it all happened for them in the fourth inning it it looked a little shaky for the Yankees earlier in the game the twins had the bases loaded in the first they got one run off David Cohn and then I mentioned the key inning was the second when he was in trouble again a couple of walks and a hit as that's fouled out of play one and two and then he got out of it with that double play. And the Twins broke loose against Latroy, or the Yankees rather, in the fourth inning with a couple of hits. Girardi's double being the key blow, and then they've just tacked onto it since then. Hey, now, wait a minute. You got to stay in your seat. Wasn't he seated a few boxes behind there early on? He, he got down to the front row. The boss. Bruce Springsteen is, was in the Yankee clubhouse prior to the game today. Picked a pretty enjoyable day to come and watch the Yankees. Of course, which day isn't? Count is now full to Valentin. Reminder that after our coverage here of Yankee baseball, you can stay tuned to <laughs> MSG and maybe get a refill on your sodas Valentin draws a one out walk but uh, you'll be able to <laughs> catch up with all the coverage of sports news around the country that's at 10 30 tonight on the MSG sports desk and then at midnight when all the games will be completed all the day's sports news you find out about that on Fox Sports News right here on MSG. Denny Hocking to step in. Good live fastball, but high from Borowski.
Texas Rangers play tonight, so they will. There's a lot of day games going on today. Broken bat, Brocious, nice play. And a strong throw and a great play on the receiving end by Luis Soho. That's why he is so valuable. He quickly says to Borowski, I'm all right. That could be a very, very dangerous play for a first baseman. Yeah, anytime a right-handed first baseman has to reach back into the path of the runner, catch the ball, then apply the tag to a guy running in the opposite direction. As Brocious makes a nice play to begin with, behind the bag, the strong throw, and then look at the play. You have to put that kind of that matador move, kind of let him glide right through the cape, and don't make solid contact with him over at first base. Behind the bag, into foul territory to throw just a little bit up the line, and there is that move by uh, Soho at first base. Boy, old that, lay. Yeah, old lay for sure. That takes some great concentration and soft hands, or in that case, kind of soft arms. I mean, if, if Soho stiffens up, uh, played with Harmon Killebrew in Minnesota, he dislocated his shoulder out of play like that. Very easy to do. So Hawking is the second out. Nixon fouls off the first pitch, and the Yankees are a couple of strikes away from nailing down their 87th win. In first strike, fans that are left at the stadium, 47,000 plus when the game started, will rise as one to see their Yankees win another one. They'll have to wait another pitch. Looks like Borowski tried to add a little extra. Looks like he tried to add one for the boys back home in Jersey. Back in Bayonne. It would be David Cohn's 17th win. Two and two. Just three strikeouts. David Cohn would probably say it wasn't his sharpest outing, but that's how effective Yankee pitchers are. He still went seven and allowed just two runs. And Nixon prolongs the agony for the Twins. The Major League's leading winner, and as David Wells did last night, Cohn makes another stride toward a potential Cy Young Award. As Molitor and Lawton look on. Got it. Nixon down on strikes, and the Yankees win it 11 to 2. They sweep the Minnesota Twins and have won seven straight here on the homestand. It has been the year of the broom. Another solid outing from a starting pitcher, even though he struggled early. And the look on those faces just says, we hope someday that we could have a year like this. 87 times now they have uh, congratulated each other in the middle of the field. You look at some of the veterans on the Twins bench. You saw it as Nixon, Paul Molitor earlier, Terry Steinbeck. You got to kind of think, will these guys be back in the Twins uniform next year? They have experienced what the Yankees are, that postseason celebration. Molitor, a former MVP of a World Series. Joe Torre now one game over 500 as a major league manager. And even the boss, Bruce Springsteen, remains to stand and applaud for this team. Glory days have been here all year for the Yankees. 11 to 2. Lots to talk about here when we wrap this one up on MSG. Back after this. It's amazing what some people will do to save a little money. Found it! What a piece of work. Yet with one call to GEICO, you could save 15% or more on car insurance. And considering the alternatives, making a phone call is pretty simple. I got it! Amateur. GEICO Direct. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. It's been repeated over and over again at your Tri-State Quality Ford store. While it's being stuck with the big money saved with low 1.9% financing that you can get on Ford Explorers. And it's all going on at the Fat Your Wallet sales event. So hurry in today and you can get low 1.9% financing on 98 Ford Explorer and save some serious dough. 
It's your Tri-State Quality Ford Stores Fatten Your Wallet sales event. Better hurry in, because it all ends soon. And the game is just underway. The Yankees, however, seem to be short one player. Where is Tim Raines? Raines, this is Coach. Where are you? The game starts. Sorry, Coach. I was at Globe Motors. I got this brand new Mercedes Benz. She's a blast. I can't turn her off. Snap out of it, Raines. Get here five minutes or else. <laughs> Another beautiful afternoon at the ballpark for Yankee fans. Let's check out the Jeep game summary. Yankees win it 11 to 2. They scored seven runs in the last three innings. David Cohn wins his major league leading 17th, 14th straight game with a home run. And that uh, graphic there at the bottom, the 41st straight game, they have held a lead. That's a major league record. And Scott Brocious, a career high five RBIs and also homered in four of the last five games. But there's also some good fielding plays, Kenny. And you mentioned the key play of the game. This will be our Hoover pickup of the game as we go back to the second inning as the Twins had the bases loaded at one time. But a 3 6 1 double play with David Cohn uh, covering at first base. And that uh, was the play that got the Yankees and David Cohn out of the jam. And at that point, it looked pretty shaky. At least David Cohn did. And uh, once the Yankees put the four runs on the board, I think he could smell that 17th win. And he just shut Minnesota down from that point on. I have a feeling in the second inning when the Twins had the bases loaded for the second straight game, Tom Kelly was saying, well, maybe finally. But then when they got that double play, they just kind of sat back and said, well, here it goes again. If you didn't get anything off David Cohn, in those first two innings and blow it out, then chances are he was going to get better, and he did. Yeah, the blowout came later from the Yankee bats when they, as you said, scored seven runs within three innings. And that was it. I, against Minnesota, it's been the, the same combination, a lot of run scoring, decent starting pitching today. I think David Cohn won't be happy completely. He's happy with the win, but not with the way he started the ball game. We're used to seeing him being effective right from the start, at least lately with his control. He didn't have the control today. He walked a few, two in a row, in fact, at one point after having a start against Kansas City where he didn't walk anybody. Uh, things are going to get a little more difficult this uh, weekend when the Texas Rangers come into town, but the Yankees will have someone to go at him with, and that's the league's leading hitter, Bernie Williams. He's standing by with Al Troutwig right now down in our MSG studios. Al? All right, Jim, uh, 18 hits for the Yankees today, a few for Bernie Williams, but I'm not sure what was the highlight of Bernie's day, the win, the home run, or this guitar being <laughs> autographed by Bruce Springsteen. Well, uh, that has to be right, uh, right, right in the top out there. I mean, the guy's a legend, man. He I don't know if I've there. ever seen you so happy, Bernie, when you, when you got oh, this thing signed oh, in the clubhouse. Pumped, man. Yeah. Could you imagine? The boss. <laughs> No, I don't want to smudge it. What does it say here? To Bernie, if you ever get tired of baseball. He's waiting wishes, for you. Yeah. You can jam with him, right? Well, I don't know, man. Well, I'll tell you what, Bernie, these really are glory days for the team, for you. I mean, would you have to say that this is as good as you felt swinging the bat over a consistent period of time as we've ever seen? Yeah, I have to say yes. You know, I'm, I'm taking a good approach out there at the plate. I'm uh, not thinking too much, you know, trying to let my talent do it. Do the, do the work, mm -hmm. uh, try to keep it simple, and uh, just try to hit the ball the opposite field and just react it to the inside pitch. After the first few innings, when you don't get to a starter like Latroy Hawkins, now it gets to that second time through in the batting order, and we say that on, on TV all the time. Here they are, a second look at the pitcher. It is a pretty important thing, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. You know, once you get through the first, uh, you know, the lineup for the first time, you know, you got a pretty good uh, look at what he's throwing and uh, what he likes to throw when he gets in trouble with two strikes, with when he's ahead in the count, and then you got a pretty good idea of what he's going to throw to you the next time. It seemed as though the one thing that the team did in terms of a philosophy was go after the first pitch. Was that something that was brought up uh, as a topic? Uh, no, but we knew that he was going to throw a lot of fastballs. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, whenever you got a guy throwing a lot of fastballs, you, you want to jump at the first one, you know, try not to get too deep in the count. And, uh, <laughs> no, we, we, we did pretty good today. No, no, t t come here, Tino. <laughs> Tino, come here. Come here, Tino. Come on in. Tino, Tino was supposed to be on the post game yesterday, but he was a little too busy. So it's nice of you to join us. Here I just want to make sure you had somebody there. Al. You, had, you, had <laughs> you felt bad for me you yesterday. <laughs> See, he enjoyed the fact that I was sitting here by myself with no one to talk to. You know <laughs> yeah, I saw you out there, too. What's with the, the new fashion? This Anski thing is getting bigger and bigger, right? Yeah, it is. All the commercials and all that stuff, it's pretty funny. Now, did you get to bond with Bruce Springsteen, too? No, that's not, you know, I'm not into, you know, that kind of music that much. I just <laughs> met him, you know, nice to meet him. He's a great, great performer, but, uh, you know, it's not my hobby. <laughs> is this the best stretch you've seen your uh, your center fielder here hitting-wise? Well, say the truth now. Come on. 
I've seen him get hot quite a few times. You know, I think in the 96 postseason was one of the hottest times I've ever seen him. And uh, right now, he's swinging the bat well, and hopefully he can carry it over for three more months. Well, Tino, thanks very much for this hey, bonus make sure visit. you guys got yeah. somebody today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't talking to him a moment ago, but because of yesterday. All right, let's just wrap up then the feeling in the dugout as you, you, you demoralize the Kansas City Royals. You take care of the Minnesota Twins. These are teams you should beat, but it doesn't always work out that way. No, you know, we should never take any team for granted. Uh, we're scoring a lot of runs. I think every aspect of, of our game right now is clicking for us. We're having great starting pitching, great mm -hmm. uh, in the bullpen, and uh, we're just scoring some uh, some runs. And Bernie, for you, for from a career standpoint, the timing of a season like this is pretty good. Oh, yes. You know, you work uh, so hard, you know, doing your whole career to, to be in a position like this, and I'm just enjoying every moment of it. Bernie, thanks a lot for your time. Thank Put you. this in a special place. Yes. A guitar <laughs> autographed by the boss, and that'll be the theme of our post-game. Bruce Springsteen will carry us through. These have been and are the glory days of the 1998 New York Yankees. And Bruce stayed to the very end, Bernie, in spite of the score, even though he did, and we caught him, move down to the front row. Back in a moment. You may find yourself 